Howdy, howdy, y'all. Welcome back to Semantics. I'm Ben Myers. Today, I'm joined by Dom and Anthony. Hello, friends. Hey, hey happy to be here. Happy to have y'all. Dom and Anthony are both from the Redwood JS4 team. Uh, Redwood, if you're unfamiliar, is a tech stack. It's a, a meta framework for building full stack applications in React. Um, it's got a lot of really cool stuff going on. And Dom and Anthony are part of the team that makes that happen. I want to give y'all a chance to kind of introduce yourselves um, for for the audience. Uh, Dom, would would you go ahead and start for us? Yeah, thank you. Uh, as in, as Ben said, I'm on the Redwood JS core team. I mostly do documentation and uh, some code fixes here and there. My latest thing being what we're going to talk about today, which I'm excited for. And uh, I also do some freelance work for Everfun, which is the first one of the first Redwood JS startups. Um, trying to make donating uh, money easier for charities because they shouldn't have to be uh, doing web development. They should just do the work that they wanted, you know, the good stuff they want to see in the world. So thank you. Absolutely. And Anthony, welcome back to the stream, Anthony. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony. I am also on the Redwood team. I'm the core developer advocate and I work for a company called StepZen as well. I was, as Ben said, on previously, I was actually on the very first semantics episode, just my claim to fame. I'm super happy to have got that title. And um, back here, mostly to just help facilitate really this getting getting Dom on here. I saw the work he was doing with the with the router, and I really wanted to kind of give a platform where you could talk about the the work he's doing. So I think it's it's really important and cool work. And uh, people are curious about my background. You can go check out that uh, other episode. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, and while I'm sharing links, go go follow Semantics on on Twitter. Um, I'm working on putting together like a, a website for the stream that'll have the the schedule. But in the meantime, the best way to find out what streams are upcoming and when they're happening is through the Twitter. So please go follow. Um, if you're in the chat, we would love to know. Uh, we would love to know who y'all are. Uh, feel free to give us a wave. Come say hello. I see Matt um, is in the the chat. That's uh, welcome, Matt. Good to have you. Um, absolutely. So we are going to be working on a Redwood project. In the interest of time, we did scaffold this project out ahead of time. Um, I'm going to put the, the link to that repo in the, in the chat. Um, but this is, if you were to follow the Redwood documentation and create, like, spin up, scaffold a Redwood application, you would get something a lot like this. The main exception is that Dom has very graciously uh, gone in and added a few blog posts uh, just so we can have some uh, pages to to work with. Um, Dom, would you kind of show us around this uh, code base a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have done Redwood Tutorial 2, Redwood's Revenge, then you'll find this repo to be right at home. Um, there's just a few pages. So uh, if we're looking at the file system, does that uh, show up for me tabbing around? Uh, in the pages here, where, but where are you there's, a, oh, um, so the the home page uh, right here just has the blog post cell. So we'll see like all of our blog posts as like a preview, um, and then we can like click around to see uh, the actual blog post. So um, it's just going to be a very simple, um, like Redwood tutorial 101. So if you yeah, let's you uh, let's hone in on the. The blog post sell real quick. I think that's the one thing yeah. that people aren't familiar with kind of Redwood isms. This is basically how we're doing the, the data fetching. So if you go to that, that kind of component, it's just a, a GraphQL query here for our posts and we're grabbing the ID title slug body created at. And then we have these different states that our data could be in, whether it's like empty or loading or failure. And then we're getting our success there, which is just spitting out the, the blog post. And then once you go to the blog post component also, then people can see, see that. Yeah, so we're pulling in the blog post component, which there's a decent amount going on here. But if you've ever seen Tailwind, that's the styling. And then we've got our router here, which is linking to the different blog posts. And the router is really kind of what we're, what we're here to, to talk about. And I think kind of setting that context of, what is the problem with routing? How does that relate to accessibility? How does that relate to single page apps? I think that could be a good kind of context to, to set before we start diving too much into the into the project. 
Absolutely. So I'm going to real quickly just kind of spin up this project. If you were following along at home, uh, go check the README. There's um, just some very thorough steps for how to get set up. So I'm going to start by installing all of the dependencies. Node is incompatible with this module. Oh, I have got an old version of that. That's fun. Um, let me... Yeah, NBM. Yeah. Uh, I do. Let me, let me try npm install you're not gonna be able to npm install it yeah you're gonna need yarn okay then then let me let me bring over my my terminal because i i do have npm um npm use 14. nice okay yeah that should, that should do it yeah and then yarn killer all right. Yeah, just for anyone who didn't understand what just what just happened there, we just have to make sure we're in the right version of of Node because we're using Yarn and Yarn workspaces because we're in a mono repo setup. If anyone has ever gone down the the mono repo train before, it's uh it's actually something npm just added recently. Npm did add workspaces, and it's just so you have your front end and your back end both be kind of separate projects contained within the one the one larger project so requires kind of a more specific cli type tooling all right after this we have to do i'm going to do this back in the vs code terminal assuming this works um so yarn redwood prisma migrate dev i okay it, it's i think the the issue here Maybe. is actually just vs codes terminal is uh, so let me let me I'll I'll scooch back and forth I guess. Um, yeah, we won't need a ton a ton more commands. So yeah. Yep. And then the I think the last one is Prisma database seed. Yarn Redwood Prisma database seed. Yeah, these commands will just get us the blog post ready to go, so we can tab around them on that uh blog post page maybe uh, rwdv yarn, yarn redwood dev got it thank you thank you yeah. super appreciate that well we'll have you you'll be a redwood developer before you know you'll have to <laughs> internalize very very quickly it doesn't take long yeah you'll do it everywhere and be surprised why is no working I'm like no redwood <laughs> yeah. let's just get a kick open our project on localhost 8910 and it'll be just kind of a simple blog as dom was saying it's um kind of takes you where you would in the tutorial and we looked at this when when i was on this is kind of like the can canonical redwood uh tutorial blog which is how most people get introduced to it so it's what we usually do for demonstrations or if we want to explain something with the with the framework we want to demo something or like you know test something it's usually the redwood blog yep all right, um, Dom, do you want to kind of work us through the problem that we're uh, going to be solving today? Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this, everything looks like it might be fine and working. Like if we go click on like about or want to welcome to the blog, like it loads and we get to read that whole blog post. And obviously we can see that things are changing, that we've navigated to a new page. But um, if we actually turn on a screen reader, we won't have any indication that we've like navigated anywhere new like uh we'll basically just hear silence which is like actually super jarring um given the fact that like we've done something like pretty crazy on like the website which is like changed the content like in mm -hmm. a very strong way and for us to not give any indication that that happened uh we're basically like picking people up and dropping them off somewhere and just letting them fend for themselves, which is like not okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's like I'm gonna yeah. give a, a quick demo of that just so that we can see uh, see that in action. So uh, voiceover is a little slow to turn on sometimes, but I'm turning on voiceover. Uh, the command for that is Command F5 if you're on a Mac. Uh, voiceover is Mac OS's built-in uh, screen reader. And there we voiceover go. on system preferences, accessibility window, leaving Redwood Group and NOUCER demo, Google visited link about list two items. You are so I'm focused on the about link. I'm gonna click about, 
and maybe it's enter. There we go. So I click enter, and the page changes, but there was absolutely no feedback. The screen reader didn't do anything about it, right? So the user, like, thinks they clicked the link. They totally did, but they're just kind of, like, waiting for that, that input, right? Did, did things change? Do I need to click it again? What do I need to do? Um, that's a problem, right? Like, that that's not an anticipated experience. Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're leaving them, like, they would have to tap around, they'd have to read the whole page out loud, basically, just to know if something changed. Like, mm -hmm. that's just so much overhead, and, like, we should be doing something about this, because, you know, uh, regular, like, not single page apps, this behavior is handled. So while we think we might be moving forward with SPAs, like we've actually left something behind that we'd get natively. And so in a sense, we're moving backwards if we don't handle this kind of behavior. Yeah, I think it's important just to drill in a little bit on why this is happening. If you haven't really gotten super deep into like what a single page application is, it's just a bundle of JavaScript that is handling your whole project. So when we're switching pages, we're actually executing JavaScript that is telling the browser to go to these different pages, unlike in the past where every link would send a request to the server mm -hmm. and serve up a new page every time. So as you were saying in the past, because we had the server serving up a new page every time, that would give the information the screen reader needs to know that's navigated. But because we're in this whole single page JavaScript world, we can't just assume that is the, the behavior because it's all happening in this kind of JavaScript black box. And we need to figure out how to tell the screen readers that we have navigated. Very well explained. I do want to give a demo. Dom called out that like, hey, in uh, static pages, good old HTML pages, the experience works as anticipated. I'm going to, uh, let me turn off voiceover real quick. Voiceover off. I'm going to go to what I believe should be a static site, and that would be the web aim site here. Um, and if I turn voiceover back on and click one of the, the links in here, we'll get some feedback. So you'll be able to see, like, this is the native experience when we're using, um, like, this is the native experience the browsers give us. Voiceover on system preferences, accessibility, Chrome, visited, link, image. Web AI visited link services list five items. Web AI M collaborating with Web AI M web content. So as we navigated to this page, um, it announced Web AI M or Web AIM collaborating with Web AIM. Right. So we clicked the link, we opened up a new page, and immediately we got feedback about it. We were told the the name of this new page. This is the experience that we get out of the box for free when we're using browser links. Um, because single page applications don't really do a hard page load because it instead substitutes the contents of the HTML page. Um, the screen reader has no such input and it can't announce that to users. So that's what we're going to address today. We're, we're going to talk about how um, Redwood um, and many other uh, tools, many other like frameworks around React are um, enabling us to solve this problem. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So if, if I were a developer, let me turn off voice over. Voice over off. If I were a Redwood developer and I wanted to address this, I wanted it to where when I click about, like it announced something to the user, like what would I have to do for that? Yeah, it's, it's a tough problem. And as a developer, like one of the things Redwood wants to take care of is all the stuff so you can focus on your app logic. And this definitely feels like, oh man, like, I have to do this myself. And so, yeah, yeah, what would you do? And I would start by generating a component. So um, I would run one of our generators here, uh, yarn redwood generate component, and let's call it route announcer, because that's the behavior we want is on page change. Um, it should go ahead, announce the new location. I think we're going to have to do this off in my, my own other terminal, but let me, let me just copy paste. This oh yeah, no worries. So I'm going to yarn redwood so the, generate component route announcer. Okay. Yeah, that's going to give us a new component called route announcer in uh, components. So I'll go ahead and navigate there. Um, should be, oh, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do some comments down here so we can think about this. Uh, basically, when the URL changes, we want to say something at the very least. 
And so the URL in a React app is usually called like a location. And the question, first question is like, how do we get access to that? Access to location. And luckily there's a hook we can import from um, the Redwood router package, Redwood JS router, and it's called aptly use location. So uh, we can go ahead and use this here and get it like that. So that's great. We have the location now. So that's going to be something like um, it's going to have a property called the path name. Cool. And this is going to be where we are. So it'd be like slash about or slash contact. And this seems like something we want to sync up. And the question is like, how do we sync data with like some kind of effect? And hopefully like that word kind of gave it away, which is we need to use a use effect hook because we want to change, we want to have something happen when location changes. So uh, I know that this location has a property called path name. So I know when that changes, I want to do something here. And now I want to like announce, right? So, but like, what does that mean too? Um, well, we know we're going to have some kind of state, so we can go ahead and use state too, to, uh, we'll just call this announcement and set announcement. Set announcement. And we know in here we want to set announcement somehow uh, with some kind of data. And let's say, like, what do we want to announce? And we could say we want to announce the location dot path name. Um, but that's not always like super readable. Like that could sometimes be uh, blog post number number thirteen, right? Um, and that's not going to give like the user a good indication of like blog post if we're using the ID. Like, I mean, that tells them they're somewhere new, but like, what does thirteen mean? Um, it might be better if we look for something like the H1 on the page, and we can do that with uh, the the query selector, which we should have access to. Um, and then we'll get this HTML node ideally, and this should have a property called text content, which is like the inside or like whatever that wraps. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that here like this, set announcement, and then uh, obviously we're assuming that an H1 is going to be on the page. So if it's not there, we're going to have to handle this. So this is already some overhead to think about. And now the question is, okay, well, I found that announcement, the thing that I think would give the user some information and how do I actually announce it? Right. And, um, this is where we need to do some, uh, like if you didn't know what a live region was, this is where it's going to come in handy is an ARIA live region is what the screen reader will look for to like announce something to say something, uh, and we can give it a, a value of assertive, which means, hey, like you should say this as soon as you can. Like uh, it'll interrupt the screen reader. Like if it's saying, hey, you're on a link and like uh, this gets changed, um, it'll go ahead and like stop um, announcing whatever we're saying and announce this. So this is the property we want because it's like super important that the user knows that they've been somewhere new. And there's one more property we have to add called ARIA Atomic. We set that to true, or we can actually just put it here, which means um, announce, uh, even if a part of this has changed, announce the whole thing. So uh, that would be useful if we had more of like a more to this string, like uh, if we interpolated and said, oh, I have to do it inside. Sorry. <laughs> um, like navigated to announcements. And then it would announce the whole string and not just the announcement again. If it, if we have ARIA Atomic here, if we didn't, it would just say like the new announcement, but for now, we'll just leave it at announcement. And this might already be enough to get us something. And now the question is, where do we want to put this? And we actually pause, we have... pause here oh, real yeah, quick yeah. Before, to, to recap kind of what we've done here to make sure that everyone understands what's, what's going on here. So location use, let's just, first define what the use location hook is doing. So I think we ought to make sure people understand that that is just, that's, that's coming from the Redwood router, but it's not really doing anything fancy right now. We're just really reaching into the browser's API and using location like you would naturally, right? Totally. It's not like a, yeah, there's no magic at all. Like Anthony said, it's like you could use like a native browser API too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so so the location is basically where you are on the page. So when you're you're clicking around, your location is changing, and that's your your route in your address bar, correct? Yeah, it's like your it's the page you're on. Um, so it won't tell you like where focus is per se, but it will tell you that you're on home or like an about page or a contact page. Yeah. 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 So all you're doing is you're just writing out a really hacky way of telling your program what the location is. And you've kind of wrote, writ, written this into the application. And we're trying to find a way to actually bake this into the framework so that every Red Hood developer doesn't have to do all this hackiness mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. Like, look at, uh, there's actually a lot of hackiness I haven't even taken care of yet, which is like, what if there's no H1 on the page? Like, what do we announce then? Do we announce the title? Do I announce the location? And so, and, and I'll be what, curious actually. Choice? Yeah. Uh, so Ben, looking yeah. at this, is this a solution that you would you would have thought of, or that you would have seen implemented in projects that you've worked on that have single page routing issues, or would would you see this problem and would your brain go somewhere else? Like, how how would you approach this and think about this? I think there are many different ways you you could approach this, and and, and part of the problem is that. There, well, there has been research done on this, uh, user testing done on this, um, and we will absolutely get to that user testing later. Um, there, like, there's been very little of it, um, and so a lot of people have just kind of thrown stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Like, for instance, one thing that that I would do probably to solve a lot of this problem is I would, instead of using a live region, I might automatically focus on the H1, for instance, and that's doable, but. Um, I, I think whether or not that works kind of depends on your user testing and the needs of your application. So there are many different ways you, you could approach this, and this is one very solid, generally applicable solution. Um, even though this does seem a bit kind of overwhelming, this, this kind of high level like, oh, we're observing the location so that whenever the location changes, we can search for the H1 so that we can use the contents of that H1 to populate a live region so that we can tell the user, hey, you're on a new page. This is that new page. Um, this is a, a very strong solution to this. Um, yeah, so Dom, I believe you were going to uh, actually plug this route announcer component in somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So we, we might think, yeah, like, OK, we've done the work, and but we're not actually rendering it. So where 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 is the best place to do this? And it's tough because um, we have to render it we have to render it everywhere it's not like it has to be everywhere right it has to be like on the page they navigate to and then redwood right now the best place is probably a layout so we'll go to the blog layout because this will wrap every page um on this application so um we'll import the route announcer from the component directory um if i can spell properly there we go and then I'm going to render it. Um, let's just render it up here and see what happens. And uh, just like that. And um, yeah, let's just, that, that should be enough to see something happening at least. And we might uh, realize that we forgot a thing or two once mm -hmm. we actually see it on the page here. Yep, I'm spinning up Yarn Redwood Dev. And oh, it opened up yet another new window. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? You can turn that off, actually. It's like one of the first oh. things I do. <laughs> Interesting. You might have to teach me how to do that at some point. Um, yeah, it's a, just a Tom yeah, bar. Sweet Very Redwood cool. hacks for, for the people. So, oh, so there's already a problem. Yeah, Ben, you just highlighted it. Is uh, We're kind of repeating ourselves here, right? Yep. Um, so one thing we forgot to do was hide it, actually. So we don't really need this to be visible. And uh, I can jump back to the code editor real quick and just add a quick style to the route announcer to hide it. And since we're using Tailwind, which is amazing, we're going to just add the SR only utility style, which they, I actually didn't know they had this till very recently, but it's awesome that they do because you can quickly just SR make something. What does stand for? Yeah, so SR stands for screen reader. And so we want this to be like, we don't want to hide it. This is tough because right in CSS, you can like hide a lot of things. You can like not render it at all. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And Tailwind provides like, I don't want it to be on the page like visible, but I still want it to be there so that the screen reader can say it. So this uh, 
utility class will come in like a hand like come in handy a lot if you want to see the contents of that class um, i'm willing to bet the tailwind is implementing something along the lines of um this logic right here basically the approach is not yeah. we're not making it visible per se we're just making it really really small um so this is very likely the tailwind implementation i put the the link to this blog post um in the the chat for y'all but it's such a, a great utility um yeah so uh i think if you don't mind i'd like to mm -hmm. uh actually kind of see without the class name and then we can apply the class name and, and just confirm that everything still works oh um, yeah absolutely I, th I think without the class name that's like a, a powerful um just kind of visualization of what's happening here so here we are I'm gonna refresh this just just in case you know i'm gonna turn voiceover on voiceover on system preferences accessibility okay. leaving accessibility features okay. at chrome leaving redwood group visited link about list two items about the redwood blog you are currently on a group okay so as i click the link it uh our live region up here changed to about the redwood blog which is the content of the h1 down here and the screen reader immediately announced it so that's incredibly cool already like we've got feedback that hey you actually navigated somewhere i'm sure this works for the other pages too redwood blog what is the meaning of life you are currently so that's pretty cool that's that's really exciting um and then uh you were showing off the sr only class voice over off let's do that real quick um so class name equals sr only We're back here uh we can't see the live region but it should still work for us voice over on system preferences accessible chrome about the redwood log you are currently redwood log you are currently on a, a little more about me you are... yep so all seems to be working voice over off is there anything more yeah. you would add to this now so if you wanted to be really um like if you were going to go live with this it's definitely not enough like if the page will every page should have an h1 um that's like a given if you're gonna go live but um if you sometimes it's not always great to announce the h1 like sometimes for whatever reason uh you know like you should really keep the uh audible experience close to the visual visual experience of your document you want those to be in sync as much as you can but sometimes your h1 like isn't descriptive enough on its own so you're gonna have to handle the case you're gonna basically like this um logic in here is going to get a lot more if else statements and what's even worse right is that this route announcer like what if you have a new layout on a new page there's just like a lot more overhead that you're going to have to think about like and yeah this is like awesome that this works but uh you as a user all of a sudden has to code for all of these edge cases like and you really can't leave it out right because if you don't if you miss a single page you're going to have that behavior like the jarring behavior of um like where am I? Did it did it work? Did it load? Is it still loading? It's like really hard to tell. So um, yeah, yeah I think I I think I think that's a a really great point, and it also relies on me as you know the person implementing a site with Redwood. It replies it it relies on me having enough accessibility knowledge to do that like testing to realize oh hey I need to be announcing um the like page title. Um, and then also knowing how to do the solution. And um, it, it, it relies on so much knowledge on my end for something that really should be just kind of given out of the box. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Like, and I didn't even mention pre-rendering because like we're using a web API here, document. And if you're going to pre-render, the pre-rendering is going to throw an error like, I'm, there's no document here, so you're going to have to code for that, too. <laughs> it's just like a lot mm -hmm. that you're all of a sudden going to have to do. So, what, uh, in, what case, or in that case, then, what can Redwood do for us? Um, what, uh, if, if, we're, if, if we're looking to really leverage um, Redwood's capabilities here, what, what would we need to do? Yeah, so... This really does seem like something that could be handled at the framework level because isn't this like every redwood app like everyone's gonna have to implement their route announcer and it's really not like the logic isn't gonna change from app to app it's gonna be like basically the same like we need to announce something descriptive 
So like, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if this was handled at the framework at the router level? And the good news is like, yes, you're right. And in V28, which is coming out uh, at the end of the week, that's going to be the case. But if you love to live on the bleeding edge, then you can actually just upgrade now and uh, your pages will be announced. There's like nothing you have to do actually. Okay. So what do I need to do to make this work? Yeah, so you have to run um, yarn redwood upgrade, and then uh, you have to put a tag, so dash T, and canary, like the bird, <laughs> which is our uh, all of the latest and greatest redwood is in uh, the canary. And okay. then we just have to hope that node modules just downloads, <laughs> which it always does, but nothing ever goes wrong with node. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Never. And so after this Friday, when, when, or, or after this week, whenever the canary goes live, um, that would probably be a different command, right? It wouldn't be dash T canary. Oh yeah. It would just be yarn redwood upgrade with okay. uh, no arguments. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you were to generate a new redwood application, once 28 is out, then you will just get this automatically. And this is what we talk about with being an opinionated framework or being a framework that values convention over configuration. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. These are the opinions. These are the conventions that you get from using a framework like Redwood because we have this team of people who are thinking about these higher level issues and, and trying to solve them at the framework level for the Redwood developers out there who may or may not, as you say, have this kind of experience. I'll see you there, it said ES build. That's exciting. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gonna uh, think about this one for, for a while. Uh, chat, if you've got any questions, let us know. Um, let us know kind of what you're, what you're thinking here. Yeah, I'd be curious if anyone in the chat has had to deal with any of these sorts of issues. I would assume, you know, there's other developers who've worked on single page applications out there. This is something that going back to when I was first on the show with Ben, how I was saying I was never taught any of this. This was never in any of my bootcamp curriculum. It was not really prioritized. So this is the type of thing that I've kind of had to figure out on my own. And actually being involved in Redwood is what led to me being able to kind of start to think about some of these issues because we've been talking about the the issues with the the router for I think it was back in like May I think is when someone opened the first issue about it so it's it's been an issue that has been known within the framework and has been something that we we want to to figure out and so I was always hearing like okay the the router is is not accessible was like okay, what does that mean what do you mean the router's not accessible and so that's kind of the what we're trying to draw out here with with this with this you know explanation of like why isn't the router accessible? What does it take to have an accessible router? Absolutely. All right. So, um, by the way, Rob compliments you on your shirt, Dom. <laughs> oh, thank you, Rob. We might have to uh, show off the Redwood store at the end of the stream because yeah. um, Redwood's got some swag. All right. So we have now installed the Canary version of Redwood, the stuff that should be going live later this week. Uh, what do I need to do now? Yeah, so I commented out the route announcer just so that, you know, I'm not, um, you know, that's totally gone. There's nothing in the layout that should be rendering. Okay. Um, this, And then all we actually have to do is start the dev server, um, go click on a link, and just be happy, I guess. Like, that and pray. Work is, yeah, pray, pray for I'll pray. You guys can be happy when it works, right? <laughs> Fascinating. Now it opened up in a new tab. I'm at some point. <laughs> I'm going to figure out the non-determinist approach to opening up new windows and tabs that Redwood is using here. Uh, yeah, we can. It, it's a quick Tomo bar. Uh, just set it to false, and then okay. it'll be. It won't happen. I I promise. All right. Uh, so we got the page up. Let me turn voiceover on. Voiceover on system preferences. Leaving scroll. Open voiceover training button. Pro leaving red. Visited link. Contact. Contact. Leaving redwood root and N O U C E redwood root about the redwood log. Chrome has new wind. Redwood log. Let what is the meaning of life? Chrome has new window. You are currently on a.
All right. Now uh, in chat. There we go. Yeah, so uh, even though we commented out our route announcer, all of this stuff is uh, already working for us. We're able to announce every route. Um, so what this means, then, if I'm understanding correctly, the way to get this working for Redwood apps going forward is just to upgrade. That's the migration path. It's just just upgrade uh, Redwood. You, do, you don't even know how... Or you don't even need to know what all the updates do. You just have to update them. Exactly. No code mods. You don't have to change anything about your pages or your layout or your routes. It's just going to happen. That's incredible. Whereas with pre-render, you had to add the word pre-render to your <laughs> So even you, you've you taken the step of adding a single word down to zero words. Zero words, yeah. I had to one-up Danny, you know. I just couldn't let him <laughs> That's... be that awesome. That's awesome though. Like what what an experience to be able to just update and get accessibility lists for free without needing to know or worry about that. Um welcome Chan. Good to have you. Voiceover off. Yeah, it was really important to like Tom and uh everyone at Redwood that this be like a priority for version one. Like we're thinking about uh, you know, hitting V1 in the next few months and like accessibility is like a V1 concern. It's not something like that we deal with after we've gotten the V2 because this is, yeah, like this need just needed to be dealt with, especially at the outset, because it's like so much harder to make these changes to the router mm. after like V1. And the router is something that affects every Redwood app. So uh, it's definitely a nerve wracking experience to work on it, but uh, it's super important. Like the changes you make there can have a lot of impact as we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. So, what more? can these updates do for us? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned before, there might be a case where your H1 isn't good enough or like just shouldn't, uh, isn't descriptive enough. So let's go to like uh, contact, for example, the contact page. And it just says contact and that's like nothing wrong with it, but say we wanted to say something a little more friendly or welcoming to the screen reader. So um, we can import a component from the Redwood JS router called route announcements. So uh, just announcement instead of announcer. And then we can uh, just render it, say like right down here, route announcement. Um, and then say we want to say, instead of contact, get in touch with us. Um, and we don't want this to be uh, on the screen, so we can pass the visually hidden prop as true. And now instead of announcing this H1, the screen reader will announce uh, whatever's inside of this route announcement uh, React component here. And that's just a, a feature we added just because it's not, we, we, we want to give you an escape patch, right? We never want to, mm -hmm. you know, there's always going to be a case where you have to do something different for some reason. And this route announcement component is the way that you can still like benefit from what Redwood gives you. And then for the edge case, you can uh, handle it with this. So now if we go navigate to the announcement, or sorry, the contact page, we should hear uh, this announcement instead. Voice over on system preferences, accessibility, Chrome, leaving red, visited, visited, link, contact, get in touch with us. You are currently a- That's super cool. Yeah, so uh, the good thing about that too is say uh, you put an announcement in the layout and then an, on the page too, like so there's one in the layout and then the page. Uh, the Redwood router will look for the most specific one so that you can always override it uh, if you need to on like a more specific page. That's that's awesome. That's that seems really well thought out. Um, just kind of broadly speaking, what is what is the chain of precedence? Because you've mentioned the mm -hmm. H1, you've mentioned like multiple levels of route announcement. What what's that kind of chain there? Yeah. Um. So we'll get into where I got the chain from when we get into research a little later, but the chain is the uh, route announcement is first. So if there is a route announcement that gets announced and then the H1, and then if there's no H1, it'll be the document title, which is like in the uh, head of the HTML. And then uh, if there's no document title, it'll be the location, the actual URL. So always, something will always be announced. Um, it's never just not gonna say anything, but yeah, we wanna be as specific as we can be. And so that's why we have that order. That's awesome. 
uh, that's that's really cool. And I I love I love providing the escape hatch because nine times out of ten your H one should be totally fine, right? But in the case that you need it, yeah, you absolutely shouldn't be like fighting with your own tooling. You like the the tooling should give you a way to be like, no, no, I do know better in this case. I need <clears throat> you to do this instead. Yeah, it's like otherwise you'd basically have to make that route announcer component again, and that's not what we want the experience mm -hmm. to be like for developers. Yeah, yeah, and, and we want like accessibility to be easy to write and like yeah. That's super cool. Um, all right, I would love to kind of talk through your experience building this out and and kind of what you learned and and the journey that you went on, because you know not. I, I highly doubt all of us will be contributing to the Redwood um, code at any time, though you though you totally can, um, or or even building like a router itself, right? But I want to talk through your your journey of like, how did you identify that this was something that needed to be addressed, and then how did you identify solutions? Yeah, it was a uh, quite a journey. So um, Tom like wanted voice over off. For Redwood and because he had like opinions especially about like all your routes being in one file which I'm like super grateful for but uh he obviously knew all the challenges that came with building your own router which is stuff like this like because there's you know react and routers have a long history at this mm -hmm. point and so we'd be playing a lot of catch up and accessibility was something that was on his mind and he wanted to get done for v1 and uh the first person who like sounded the alarm was uh david lur who posted an issue way back in may like a year ago this issue here that the so there's actually more like we'll get into what we're going to do next especially with focus but like he was telling us exactly what was wrong and uh, to reproduce it was literally just like start any redwood app turn on a screen reader and like there you go so he pointed me in the right direction um he i think works at tailwind labs now so i think uh Back then, I just thought it was like, oh, it's cool that like all oh, people are noticing this stuff. But he's actually like an accessibility like expert, so he, you know, mm -hmm. he, he knew what he was talking about. Or like it wasn't just a, I guess I'll post an issue um, or anything. And like he said at the bottom, like he said, this is a critical bug. Like he's not even going to use Redwood because of this. Like, so that's like, um, I, I think people don't shouldn't underestimate like the severity of these things, you know, because it really does exclude. It not only excludes like people from navigating to your website but it excludes like developers from using your framework you know um but he gave me he pointed me to gatsby as like the state of the art uh or like the best practices and specifically to um marcy sutton and madeline parker uh their work at gatsby is like what i like i owe them like everything really in this pr they they uh they they shared their research and their implementation with like everyone in the tech community and like did like an amazing thing for open source by making this like um just by putting it out there you know so that like everyone else like even next js just uh pulled in a route announcer based on this so like the work that these two did um like with the research and the pr is like just here here um and, and um marcy's uh blog post is like really thorough it's almost like a scientific paper so I, I highly recommend like reading this if she goes over like all the message all the methods she did and has like two takeaways at the bottom um one of the takeaways we've implemented which is that the, like the page should be announced and then uh the other takeaway is that a small interactive element should be focused and she recommends that that element be a skip link so uh skip links are just as important as like announcing the route, especially if you're talking about like making a production website, that's like, uh, you have to provide and I guess skip link is something that lets you skip the navigation, usually at the top of the page, because it gets like really, it's like, um, really tedious, if you're gonna constantly have to tab through the mm -hmm. navigation. Um, that's something we'll uh, be adding to Redwood, like, before v1 for sure, just like after we do a few more router changes, because uh, managing focus and react is hard yeah. to, to say, to, to say it succinctly. <laughs> I think in the, well. the chat, we have my coworker, Isabel, and she and I can commiserate on focus is hard, but react is not well suited to solving problems of focus. 
That's that's my hot take right there. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, but yeah, it was these. Uh, sorry, there's one more uh, person I should give thanks to, which is Kyle Boss, who did the next JS PR. Uh, I followed his impl implementation a little more closely because uh, it was just more um, like it, uh, the router had more similarities, I think. Um, and I actually have to follow his implementation even closer because he uses a React portal. And at first, I didn't understand like why, because I was like, if I don't have to use a portal, I'm not going to, because I've never even, you know, I've heard about them, but mm -hmm. that sounds really hard. But uh, I realized it's for like decoupling, I think, the route announcer a little bit. That's more of like a concern for the framework is like, how do we test things? And we don't want to have things too coupled and a portal will let us like kind of test the router on its own and the route announcer on its own. Um, but really like I owe it all to like these four people who like really paved the way for um, not only like just, you know, making the whole web more accessible, but just doing it in such a concrete way. Absolutely. And sharing what they learned with people like that, like mm -hmm. Gatsby could have totally held on to the secret knowledge of we have figured out accessible routing. Right. Um, yeah. And and they didn't like they, they shared it so that anyone who builds anything for single page applications can learn with it and add on to it and do testing of their own. And I think that's really cool. Do you think if there you were coming at this problem totally from first principle, now that you've kind of seen a bunch of different solutions, do you think there's any way that kind of future implementations would be able to improve on what we've got now? Or do you think that this could be kind of considered a solved problem? What, what do you think about that? I think there's a lot more to do in terms of like um, linting rules and things like that for uh, making sure that your announcements are actually good, right? Because we are like, this is announcing something. <laughs> is that something good, like descriptive? Um, so we can add a lot more like tooling for sure. Um, the implementation I think is um, maybe it could handle, like one thing Redwood could do better is like when we get, uh, and this is, you know, we're just such a young framework. Like when we start getting more like static pre-rendering, um, I think that'll help a lot for like accessibility just in general because like static web pages are way better than, you know, especially if you have cells and data's loading and things, you like mm -hmm. never want to put your H1 in like something that might not load that's like not good so um but uh and is your yeah, ES lint so. PR that you have open is that related to the linting that you're talking about um that's just like linting for uh more general accessibility concerns like ha not having an alt attribute on an image tag like uh because right now that would go unnoticed and that will add those rules but um I think in the Madeline Parker's PR the a11 helpers she goes over a lot of like next steps. And one of those is like adding uh, that around announcement component should do more error checking, basically like for, uh, is it's like the length of its children would be a good thing to check. Like you could think how a git commit message is linted for like, hey, like you passed 10 words, like you should really rewrite that. We could do the exact same thing here and even like fail CI, right? Like if you really wanted to, if, if those things don't pass. Um, Matt would be happy to hear that. You know, we don't forget to do error handling. Yeah, I think a uh, focus is probably the next thing on the horizon mm -hmm. in terms of like the next great challenge for us and like the skip link especially. But uh, we're we're happy to get mm -hmm. this in for sure to give people like the, uh, you know, just the things they get for free like when they build on Redwood. Absolutely. Um, to clarify the the focus horizon for um people who who might not be familiar with uh focus management across routing, um, so if you because you're not doing a hard page load, if there's any components that React decides like shouldn't unmount or shouldn't update or whatever, um, then like those stay on the page. That means if you're focused on any of them, um, your focus will remain there too. Uh, for instance. If I go back to um, our page here, when I click about, this nav bar stays. So my focus, I believe, should, in, in, in most single page applications at least, remain on the about link. Um, in this case, it looks like it didn't. So it looks like y'all are doing something right there already. Oh, no, there we go. Actually, okay. we're uh, re-rendering the layout, which is really bad. 
Okay. Um, so we're actually doing something right by doing something wrong. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, on many single page applications, if I had clicked about, because the nav bar usually wouldn't re-render, um, mm -hmm. the focus would stay there, right? So it's like you go to a new page and your your focus just kind of sticks where it is. Like no one expects that. Um, so yeah. that, that that's an interesting problem to solve. It's interesting to solve that from a framework level because you have to find not really a one size fits all approach, but a one size fits most approach. That's really hard to do depending on the variety of applications out there. Yeah, it's it's much it's a much greater challenge than the the announcement. Like no one's going to argue with like, you know, something should definitely be announced, but I can see where like focus we might get more pushback on cert like Hey, what about this implementation? And then mm -hmm. uh, it'll be tough to find something, yeah, that uh, works, like you said. But like, definitely something that the framework should help you with. It shouldn't be uh, up to you. Like, we should we should help you out. Awesome. Uh, well, cool. I do you have anything else you want to add to this uh, demo, or anything you wanted to talk about, Dom and Anthony? Um, I definitely want. Uh, we'll have documentation for all this too, and also just like where you can learn about accessibility too, because it's like a much broader topic than what we've done here. Like if you're making any React modal or anything like that, uh, we want you to have like what you need. Um, so we'll we'll provide like more resources just to learn about it, right? Um, like libraries to use, like Reach UI or React Aria. Those are two really good ones. Um, just a uh, just know that this is just the beginning, I guess. And you can yeah, we're lucky that Dom is also one of our most prolific doc writers as well. So we're in the process of getting some a lot a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today. There will be you know some really well fleshed out documentation explaining explaining all of this. And we had a, a preview link that I dropped in the the React podcast Discord accessibility channel. That is um, just kind of like what you're what you're working on. But if anyone wants to go go check that out and kind of give some some notes or or help out if anyone finds this stuff interesting. Obviously, you know Dom is is heading this up, but we're always open to contributors. Redwood is of course an open source project. We love getting people involved. So if this is exciting to anyone. If anyone else wants to be on the forefront of accessibility research in frameworks, then um, we would love to to have you involved and to to get your thoughts and get your opinions on all of this. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, and also, where can we get some good Redwood swag? <laughs> I'm glad you asked because there's a new shop in town. Just go to shop.redwoodjs.com and you too can look cool on stream. I have, I, I definitely ordered myself the black on black shirt that's coming on, uh, coming in very soon. But yeah, some, some good stuff. Go get yourself some Redwood swag. It, Y'all have a very classy logo, I think. Good stuff. <laughs> um, Dom, Anthony, thank you both so much for for hopping on. It was um, uh, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled that we got to show this off and and show the good work that Redwood is putting forward um, to make Redwood applications more accessible out of the box and talk a bit about that tooling, how tooling can really give us the lift that we need for free, oftentimes without us even realizing it, right? Like when the magic command is, oh, just update your Redwood version, like that barrier to entry is so low. And I think that's very cool. Um, so thank you both for, for hopping on. Uh, chat, go ahead and um, put it on your calendars. Uh, we're going to be back this, uh, this time next week, uh, 12 p.m. Central Time next week. We're bringing on Chris Burns. Chris is going to be showing us the Gov UK design uh, system. We, uh, I've heard great things about this. Um, you can imagine as a, a government, right? Like building accessibility into your design system is such an important part of the process because otherwise you legitimately uh, exclude people from being able to participate in civil processes, right? Like that's a, a non-trivial thing. So we'll be exploring the Gov UK design system together. Again, you can go follow some antics on uh, Twitter at semanticsdev. Um, I'll put that link in the in the chat as well. Um, go follow Dom. I'll put that in the <laughs> chat as well. And Anthony's all right. You you can go follow him if you want. Um, 
You don't have to. Let's go. <laughs> but you can totally do that. Um, and uh, stick around for a bit too because I am going to uh, find someone to raid. That's something I'm trying to get better at. So um, thank y'all so much, and we will catch you next week. Bye.